Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à Montréal. My name is Isabelle Van Grind. I'm the uh, I'm a choreographer and the artistic director of Van Grind Corps Secret. I'm really, really delighted and very honored to be invited to speak to you today. I will try to share my personal journey towards interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity. I will not attempt to preach for it, as I profoundly believe that all approaches to creation are totally important and should be respected and supported. My personal journey into transdisciplinarity challenged me a great deal, but it opened up my, my horizons, brought a lot of exchanges, new ideas and new tools into my practice. And I found great inspiration, new motivation and energy to create. I brought into this journey longtime collaborators, dancers, composers, lighting designers, costume designers, and administrators who were all equally challenged. Uh, but those who stayed with, with me met the challenges brilliantly, and I thank, I thank them for standing by me. I believe that it is my collaborations with music that brought me into uh, this new territory. First of all, a small personal lexicon uh, about how I understand. <laughs> I know that at this forum, uh, we all talking about interdisciplinarity. It all started with multidisciplinarity, the use of several disciplines to create work. Interdisciplinarity for me is more like using what is common from several disciplines. And I use the term transdisciplinarity for my work at the moment uh, because I believe it transcends all disciplines, even beyond the arts. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So it's the collaborations uh, with musicians and composers that started the journey. Um, through about 12 major projects with new music ensemble and composers, among whom, whom uh, the, the Ensemble Contemporain de Montréal and Véronique Lacroix, Nouvel Ensemble Moderne and Lorraine Vaillancourt, to, to name but a, few, uh, a couple. And I, of course, it's fairly typical for a choreographer to work with uh, music, uh, but I, I believe that it's our approach in our conversations with music that brought me into this new terrain and this new area of, uh, of collaborating with other disciplines. My motto has always been to find a dialogue rather than illustrating or representing the music. Um, dance being a voice in the musical score and music being a voice in the choreographic score, which is a quote from a musical director here, Tom Gossage. Um, and uh, we've shared the stage and with the musicians and engaged with them um, sometimes, sometimes not. And I think it's, uh, it's this kind of research that uh, made me think about going further than music. But uh, here's a little example of what we did, a uh, short extract, ex excerpt of what we did with Le Nem in uh, 2006, I believe. I apologize for the quality of the video. It had to be downloaded from YouTube. We, we need to have all our older projects digitalized. And it doesn't seem to want to start. Here it is.
So in this particular project, um, we uh, we commission an intro, or the NEM commissioned an intro to Vortex, uh, written by Tom Gossage, and um, uh, we we worked with uh, Vortex Temporum of Gérard Griset. Um, we did some analysis of the score with Lorraine. We had the NEM actually improvise from Vortex Temporum before we started the project in a in this other concept that we call Les Chemins de Traverse, which um, was uh, a concept where we experimented on the power of music. We uh, collaborated with different ensembles here and in Europe and uh, invited the audience to um, attend several performances uh, of the same choreographic material, but performed to different uh, to totally different music and uh, different uh, and with different ensembles, so that allowed us uh, to create links to a lot of um, a lot of ensemble and musicians and composers, both abroad and here, to experiment and to start also uh, experimenting with open work concepts, um, which were practiced in the new music scene in New York, and I I started applying them to my work, so. Um, we see how um, in this idea of transdisciplinarity, the transposition of concepts that are used in music um, uh, started being important in my work uh, because we, we started practicing it then and it continues to this day. It also changed my relationship to the performers and their role in the work. They uh, work with a choreographic score, they informed of all the, the goals that they have to reach at different times and their relationship with the music and the musicians when, when uh, the music is live and uh, they, uh, they just make decisions as, as uh, they're performing. And that is a very different way of working that came from music. So the big turning point um, in uh, the moving into transdisciplinarity was when I realized that the body was no longer a tool for me to create with, but it had become the subject of my work. And uh, this video embodies this turning point. When I realized that um, the body had become the subject of my work instead of just a tool, it became vital to start establishing collaborations with the other specialists of the body in the arts, humanities, and sciences. I embarked on research through interviews in seven countries with scientists, writers, scholars in the humanities, artists from other disciplines. And I started sharing the research with other artists and inviting them to collaborate. So this really started um, the process of um, these different tentacles that went into different areas and then brought a lot of diff different and new aspects into uh, the work. And it brought the company where it is today. Van Grim Corsecret does transdisciplinary productions for the stage, installations, works for public uh, spaces, and works for the web. We use new technologies, I'll get into that a little bit later. We inform by collaborations with other artistic disciplines, sciences, the humanities, 
and our work is uh, focused on the body. So the, um, the research uh, and the interviews with other specialists of the body uh, brought uh, a lot of information that inform several creations, but it culminated in the pro this project called The Body in Questions which really is a good example of um, what I call transdisciplinarity, because the body in questions um, extended my practice. We, we had a, it was first an exhibition with live performances, bringing together the work of 30 artists and scholars, so I became a curator as well as a choreographer and artistic director. We created then the virtual uh, version of the physical exhibition by creating a web platform uh, called bodyinquestions.com, which is still um, online. And uh, it has, uh, it's made of all these videos of the work and classified by artists and uh, by teams. And uh, when you scroll down, you, you also find all the research, which becomes an important part of what we do because the research doesn't stay uh, doesn't stay in obscurity we try to promote it and we try to give people and the public access to it uh, it is important for people who want to go a little further than you know just looking at an artistic object who want to know where the ideas come from um, we also, it's also a catalog essay collection, so I had to become uh, um, an editor. Um, we also launched into a couple of transdisciplinary symposiums, both at Bishop's <coughs> University and at University of Alberta. These symposiums had specialists in stem cell research, genetics, anthropology, um, uh, visual arts, music, um, all, all these disciplines coming together to discuss uh, specific topics of the body, the body in questions being uh, about the perception of the body. And this is uh, a short excerpt of the initial exhibition at FTA in Montreal. interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity for us. It brought, first of all, it's our first experience with a non-captive audience. So it brought me to think 
to, to start thinking completely differently about composition, choreographic composition. The people um, basically could visit the exhibition at Galerie UCAM uh, outside of performance time. Um, but they were also like three hour performances every night during FTA in 2012. Uh, people could basically come and go, stay as long as they wanted with one aspect or leave or so. I had to try to think of a, almost like a holographic way to think of composition so that when people approach uh, a performance, they could get the essence of it at any time uh, without having to get a, a beginning, a, a middle and an end. The other way that transdisciplinarity really transformed the work is, for instance, we had uh, the genome of one of the performers sequenced, the performer Marie Brassard, who's a very well-known actress uh, here in Quebec and in the world, and um, uh, the artist Monique Régin Balzeber made her portrait from her genome, so we had all the information of her genome in one work um, in the exhibition, and if you had put it all together, you could have cloned Marie Brassard, essentially or so they tell us. Um, what else is important about the body in question? Um, well, it's the first time also we used multi-generational multi bodies in, uh, for the performers. They range from 20 to 60. Focusing on the body it became really obvious to me that I couldn't just present a super performative young adult dancer but that I had to present uh, a more diversity of bodies. And uh, that's where this story started. And uh, like I said, the research was also disseminated, not just on the web platform, but we decided to uh, expose, exhibit two of the essays that were written for uh, the project, one by historian Christian Berko and the other one by geneticist uh, Diana Gilchrist from uh, University of Alberta. This project also, in terms of uh, financing, because some of you must be wondering how, they, how in the world can they finance all this, um, it's, it was a collaboration with University of Alberta through a SHRC grant, but also grants from the, the Arts Council and uh, co-productions from FTA, and so the big, uh, these projects are very challenging in terms of mounting the finances and assem assembling the finances and bringing it all together. And we were lucky to have uh, all these partners. So the second turning point in uh, my journey towards um, transdisciplinarity was, the, was new technologies. Uh, new technologies were brought into my work thanks to an invitation to collaborate with Sean Ferguson and the Center for Research in Music, Media, and Technology at McGill University. This collaboration lasted three years um, and yielded two, uh, two productions. It took me two years to accept this invitation, actually, because I was very wary of new technologies. Um, I was... Um, I, I kind of went into it with the um, sine qua non uh, condition that techno that we would, would not be making demonstrations of the new technologies that Kermit was developing, that we were making art, and that uh, technology would remain a tool and not uh, and not the goal essentially of what we were doing. So the first thing that we did is that. Uh, we, we worked with the T-Stick, which was a pre-existing um, uh, mu digital musical instrument created by Joe Malloch. Um, the T-Stick uh, at the time was um, had needed to be plugged in, and the first thing that we needed to do to, to enable the dancer to use it was to make it wireless. So the, the first piece that the piece that we created with the T-Stick is due for uh, pour un violoncelle et un danseur with performers Chloe Dominguez and uh, Elijah Brown. So here we see the T-Stick with all the wires and beside you see the dancers, the dancer manipulating the T-Stick um, without the, the wires. Um, 
the T-stick enabled the dancer to um, specialize and transform the music in real time. So the dancer had access all of a sudden to the uh, musical score as well as the choreographic score. And that was also really important for dancers who had been working with me for a while because I kept uh, trying to um, encourage them to make decisions to uh, inscribe themselves in the musical score and to um, to create a real conversation, not to illustrate it and uh, and and to find their place. And that this the the work with these uh, musical digital instruments enabled the dancers to kind of feel that relationship much more concretely. Then we embarked on the much bigger project called Les Gestes, uh, still at Kermit. Les Gestes was to uh, be a project to transform the T-stick into digital musical instruments that uh, could be grafted to the dancers' bodies. And the shape of the instruments would be inspired by my research on the body. Some would evoke the more primal body. Others would evoke the more uh, future, futuristic body. So we see that research um, takes a lot of patience. It starts with car cardboard, foam. Uh, it takes a lot of imagination. Then it moves on to uh, a more beautiful um, design still without the technology. And it really is fascinating in terms of creating uh, closer bonds and exchanges of territories between the dancers and the musicians. We see here a musician playing uh, an instrument on the dancer's body. So these instruments can be fully played by musicians. And they also can be played in a different way by the dancers. Uh, um, depending on how they are, they are mapped. And here is an, an excerpt from Les Gestes.
So the challenges that we encountered in this project, uh, first of all, was the fact that it was a research project that we had to bring to production. We were the specialists in production. At McGill, they were specialists in research. It means that developing new technologies that had to work every time absolutely well. This piece uh, was presented in Montreal, but also toured in uh, throughout several countries in Europe. And uh, thank God the technology never failed. I think it only happened at a general in Montreal. But it's a, that's a very big challenge when through transdisciplinarity we start working with research centers and, uh, and, and we have to bring uh, everything to the stage and everything to be uh, production ready. Another big challenge, uh, not just for this project, but generally uh, when you work with other disciplines, is that they have different cultures, different cultures of work, different habits. Um, uh, people will react in a different way to what you want to do, and uh, that has to be understood uh, all the way through. First of all, uh, you create the collaboration on an administrative and financial way. Well, the different milieus have different habits, different cultures for that too. And then uh, throughout, throughout the artistic work as well. So those are um, certainly very interesting things that enrich us, but they also uh, are a big challenge. And especially for a small company like us uh, that uh, at the time uh, up, up, up until very recently had only one other person full time and myself. So those are things to think about uh, when you dive into, uh, when one dives into these projects. The uh, more artistic uh, challenge with Les Gestes, you saw how the dancers were constrained in their movement by uh, the, the instruments that were grafted on their body, the sensors were in these um, instruments. And it's interesting because in uh, our next, uh, our next uh, project called Symphony 5.1, a collaboration with Brady Works and Mr. Tim Brady present today. Um, we, you'll see that we using technologies that uh, completely uh, free the dancer's body. So in Symphony 5.1, also work for the stage, we transpose to the, the image, the process of interactivity developed in the gestes for sound. Uh, this time the technologies used leave the body unencumbered by sensors. A uh, wonderful tool for dance, the interactivity is managed through infrared cameras. The process is designed by visual, visual interactive designer Jérôme de la Pierre, who also designed bodyinquestions.com. So in Symphony, the performers dance with their clones. That's not very high technology, it's just a twist of certain low-tech things. Um, the whole stage is interactive, which means that the performers in this open work concept that we work with, they make decisions about their movement, but they make decisions about how they manipulate the images. And they, like I said, they control it without sensors on their body. In Symphony 5.1, uh, like in the body in question, we have a multi-generational cast. This time we had two kids um, who performed. So we had uh, four performers, two adults and two children, and two musicians who were both adult and children. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was uh, possible thanks to collaboration with École Supérieure de Ballet du Québec, uh, who co-produced, they co-produced, and they also arranged the schedule of the young performers to be able to work with us and tour with us. Here is a small excerpt.
um, symphony continue to uh, explore the perception of the body, but most particularly uh, our multiple virtual identities and the wonderful technologies that we had at our disposal enabled to, um, to explore that in uh, a way that was never possible before. Sorry, I'm having a little blank moment here. <laughs> Um, it was. It's also a project that toured uh, quite a bit, and um, I think that an interesting thing to talk about in terms of the the forum was that it opened up new markets for us uh, in the sense that some festivals and some presenters in Europe who normally would not present dance, for instance, uh, started uh, calling us and being interested to present the work because of the new technologies, the dimension numérique. And um, so we see that also by uh, going interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, it doesn't just have, um, it, it just, it has a more possibility, sorry. It has, um, uh, it brings possibilities to bring new audiences uh, in, into to the work, and it also transforms the 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 conversations that we can have with the audiences. The next project um, was our first foray into um, public work for public space, Corps Secret Corps Public, which was an architectural sound and choreography installation for public space. Um, which uh, was presented by F FTA and Place des Arts in 2016. So um, we have, we pushed uh, further this idea of a non-captive audience because we addressed not only the, uh, the, the audience who would come to see the performance at certain times, but also an audience of passersby. And, um, Here's a um, small excerpt. Just an interesting little anecdote in terms of the relationship to the audience. So this installation was interactive in terms of the sound. Um, also, the structures were made of uh, miroir santin, which means that de depending on the light, um, people could see the reflection or their, their body could become hybridized with the performers on the other side of the structure or other passerbys. Um, and uh, we rehearsed, of course, in situ for this project. And it was amazing to see that in the heart of the Quartier des Spectacles in Montreal, there was um, a population that was craving free performances. They came every day to rehearsals and uh, asking, is there going to be a performance? Is it going to be free? And uh, I mean, it was so moving that uh, that was sort of one of the byproducts of creating for public space. And it's something that I would very much like to do it again. It was because of its not just artistic, but also human dimension. So now um, briefly uh, into uh, the project that's presently in, uh, um, in creation, 
Eve 2050, and uh, here is a short teaser of the web series part of the project. <laughs> Fifty is a triptych. Um, it's um, a web series in five episodes that started being broadcast this week on Wednesday and will be broadcast every week until June uh, 15th. It's also an immersive and interactive uh, multimedia installation with live performances, which will pre be presented at Agora de la Danse at the Wilder Building next uh, September. And uh, it's also a stage production which will be presented in October 2019. Who is Eve 2050? Eve, Eve 2050 is a symbolic character that is um, female and male, transgender, uh, child, adult, old, uh, of all origins, of all cultures, artificial, organic, cyborg, um, hybrid, she represents uh, tomorrow's humanity. Um, here is, um, and so the, it starts with the web series. The web series uh, we opted for, um, a, so, yeah, so why uh, is it a triptych, sorry. Um, it's a triptych uh, because of course it affords us uh, the possibility of having three completely different creative process to, um, to explore uh, this subject uh, with different means. Um, and it's also to have three completely different conversations with the public. With the web series, we have an intimate individual uh, relationship. People watch it on their, uh, in, on, on their phone, on their uh, tablet, on their computer. Uh, the Installation uh, people um, uh, are immersed in into the universe of uh, Eve 2050. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later. And um, and on the stage, uh, the project is has a more collective resonance, and uh, the story of Eve um, evolves in in space and time. Here is a. Um, the first episode of Eve, the prelude.
So this is a collaboration with Davai and the director Robert Desroches, who's been a close collaborator of the company uh, since 2012. The first video I showed you of the body in question was made by him. And it's actually, it was a collaboration more about promotional material that became an artistic collaboration and um, evolved and deepened. Um, and it's often like that with the people we work with. It starts in a certain way, and then it makes us want to go further in a certain direct, in a, some directions that we hadn't anticipated before. So how did the transdisciplinary research inform the scenario? For EVE 2050, like for the body in question, we had a call for papers. We received papers from uh, different countries, uh, both in the sciences, anthropology, psychology, psychiatry, ne the neurosciences, biology, and as well as from artists uh, from all disciplines. And um, we had a series of brainstorming session at our uh, studio Espace Corps Secret um, that were focused on the different teams we were exploring. So they all always had like the core creative team plus some guests uh, who could inform the process from, um, from their own discipline. And here's an example of what we, the surprising things that we learned uh, during this brainstorm. So um, in English, um, the biologist uh, François Joseph Lapointe, who specializes in the microbiome, uh, informed us that um, more than 50% of the cells in our body are not human. Uh, and also that 99% of the genes in our body are not human, they're all bacterial. So that really changes the perception of one's body. Uh, it's being an ecosystem rather than uh, being one individual. Um, and so these, um, this research uh, informed the whole process and the writing of the scenario. Uh, of the web series, which explores in origin new rituals of life and death and new modes of reproduction. In Transform, it explores the fusion with the machine and the machine trying to read the human. In Hybrid, it explores a lesser known possibility of augmentation, which is the hybridization with other species, both uh, vegetal or animal or bacterial. Uh, to all this to enhance uh, our sense and to be able to capture more data from the universe and get a better sense of the universe around us because apparently the human body is very ill-equipped to sense most of the data in the universe. And in Sapiens, uh, we explore the possibility that humanity will split into three different species by 2050 the, the, the cyborgs, the one who opt to, for fusing with the machine, which is the better known part of this because it's, um, it's fine. Uh, the research into that is financed by big conglomerates like Google, for instance. Uh, the, uh, the hybrids will choose to augment their senses by hybridization with other species and the pure and dur uh, sapiens who will refuse augmentation or perhaps Redder will not be able to afford any enhancement. The other aspect that the web series touches on is the main problem in 2050, which is the problem of the lack of water uh, or the, the, the difficulty in sharing the water on the planet. And that's why part of the web series is filmed in the desert. So the installation, um, the installation is a completely different uh, approach. It's immersive. When you, wa you walk in a space that's enchanted by technology, uh, things happen as you walk by them or as you touch them. You can visit it without uh, or with live performances. And we've pushed several new technologies, so we had to research them through many labs at, uh, at our studio. To, to finally decide the ones that would work best. 
um, and your image is captured uh, by infrared cameras, kinects, and then in real time uh, re-projected um, on the holographic panels or elsewhere in the space, so be you become part of the story. You are woven to the story of Eve, and depending on your trajectory, you make your own story within the installation. And here is a short excerpt of the installation in creation. presentation here, but just adding that um, in uh, the installation, the same technologies that we used without sensors on the dancers' bodies to, to, uh, for the interactivity with the image, we're using uh, the same technology for interactivity with the sound, so it creates this wonderful effect that the sound seems to emanate from the body of the dancers or the body of the visitors of the installation. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much. I think we have time. We can just use some of our coffee break time for questions. If there are questions, I think it would be worthwhile to... Um, are there any questions? No questions. Oh, there must be questions. There must just be just questions. People think there are questions. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh, there's Hi, Bob. Bob. Richard. Um, where do you see where do you see the developments from Eve going? I mean, you you this is a huge production and looks to be very successful. Where do you, what trajectory do you see? What questions have arisen from this that you want to address specifically, or what's tickling the back of your mind, thinking ah, oh, there's another path to go down? Be, I'm really curious to know. Um, I actually don't really know. I think that the the one desire that's her uh, reason is to to continue the web series actually because to that is such a, a fantastic well uh, I, I very much like all the collaborators who are working with me on that and it's really an exploration of very new territory with a lot of possibilities I love the installation idea too I hope it will go well this it's currently in creation so it's it's hard to say um, but it's very possible that after such a project, I'll want to go completely unplugged 
and do a tiny little thing that has no technology and no hassles. But um, I don't know at this point. Actually, I, I'm still very much uh, at the beginning of the. We, we're just finishing the web series. We uh, we're going to be mostly involved with the the installation, and then the stage production has a lot of challenges uh, because we want to go further than Symphony, further than Les Gestes. Uh, we have to see if the technologies used in the the installation are going to be good for the stage, are going to transpose well, or if we're going to have to research other aspects. Can I just follow that up? Have you considered, since you've gone to the web series, and this is uh, highly interactive on stage, have you considered VR at all in terms of moving into that area as, because of the interest of audiences that you, you were talking about in the public rehearsals? So I'm not the first person who uh, suggests this, but... Um, both the uh, Jérôme de la Pierre, who's my collaborator visually in this, and myself, are they, we don't like to have to put stuff on the body, <laughs> and we don't. I mean, I, I I've had some good experiences with virtual reality, but it's still at a stage where it's you have to go in and put this thing on, and um, it's it's less appealing for me at the, at the moment. But I'm certainly going going to be thinking about it. about the, the, the trajectory that you've shown us. Um, you have developed or co-developed or have developed uh, with others certain musical instruments, so to speak, for the for this dancers. Um, and they have been used to create precisely one piece. Um, is there something in your practice that lets you grow, reuse, um, repurpose these instruments, or are you creating, it looks like you're creating new things for each production, and then the old production gets uh, either archived or maybe goes on tour or something like that, but is there any process of you know, sustainability in that? It's a good question. My tendency is, as an artist is to keep moving forward, but um, for Les Gestes, um, we were actually interested to continue touring Les Gestes. There was a lot of interest in it, but it was developed with a university research center, and there was no resources there to continue to co accompany us, uh, the, post, the, the doctoral students who had participated had moved on. And so that's the <coughs> problem of a different culture, a different setting, it's not a production place. And also, I mean, it, when you work with new technologies, things become obsolete so fast. I mean, we did think about using, uh, reusing Les Gestes, and, we have the expertise within the company now to do that. But it seems much more interesting to move into applying the technologies that we use for Symphony, which didn't require sensors on the dancers' bodies, and apply, the, apply them to the sound, which is what we're doing now. So we're using the idea, but with new technologies. Um, we were using in the, the installation some elements from um, actually uh, the body in question. So it does happen, but it is difficult when you, when you keep moving on to, uh, and, and of course in, in the stage production <coughs> of Eve 2050, we will be using some of the same technologies as with in uh, uh, Symphony. So we have, um, the software and all that, that that goes with it and the equipment. Um, and we also more savvy in how what it takes and especially when we tour it. Um, and we're just going to add to it. So basically, Eve, the stage piece, will be a combination of what we've discovered for the installation and what we've discovered in, uh, in Symphony and in Les Gestes because uh, uh, we, we will apply some of the same mapping. And Hello, hi. Uh, I really appreciated your um, focus on transdisciplinary thinking. And um, I know that you gave us a lot of material, so sometimes it's hard to fully unpack what transdisciplinary outcome you're really seeing and envisioning. I think the closest you came to was with the, the Eve 
2050 project, and spe I really enjoyed that the, the idea of working with um, say someone in, in the biomedicine or bio biology field to uncover potential outcomes, like concrete outcomes from um, combining disciplines. So uh, this is perhaps just a follow-up a little bit on what Sandeep just asked, but could the thread that you've built be something about the transdisciplinary nature of what you're doing? Meaning, or for example, what I saw with the NEM performance and the way the dancers were moving in the sort of lexicon of gesture, I could still see that, I believe I could see that, in, in the, the installation demonstration video here. And so um, I'm wondering, because I, I do also work with technology quite a bit, and I, I, I'm able to transfer my knowledge from one project to another, even if the hardware and the software change a bit. And I often think that it's because of the transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary nature of what I do that I can actually bring these things through the different projects. So I guess that's, that's kind of the question is where like I said, I, I identified some of that transdisciplinary outcomes, which I would also define as like having an outcome that can't really be analyzed or understood completely from the different disciplines, but it, it, it seems to call forth a new type of way of looking at the art form. And I'm wondering if that's something that, despite the changes in technology, because we, we all know about that, Apple's done really well actually to maintain the whole touch figuring thing for many, many decades. And I'm wondering, well, that's very overkill, but for quite a few years. So I'm wondering if, if there's anything of, of the transdisciplinary nature of what you're trying to achieve that's... Continuing. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, with the body in questions and the interviews, I brought a lot of the people who are still informing the work. So the, the scientists and, and um, uh, the researchers and artists also who, who continue to work with us. For instance, in Eve, there's some um, some artwork from Marilyn Oliver, who also had some pieces in the body in question. So we continue to think together. We continue also to try to, that's an aspect I didn't touch on, but to emulate other projects. In Edmonton, for instance, uh, we've given all our research to a group of artists who are now create a response to Eve uh, in a group exhibition. Um, I don't know if this really answers your questions, but th there's a lot of threads that continue on. But as the artist who creates these projects, I'm, I'm not very well positioned to have an outside analytical view on what's going on. I'm not a scholar. And I spend my time creating these projects and making sure they happen and deliver them. Um, and it's it's, it would take a, an outside eye or maybe in a few years like, um, to, to kind of really analyze what's going on, uh, how the transdisciplinarity keeps informing one project to another, what are the threads. But um, uh, maybe I didn't go to all the aspects there, there's a lot of them, but uh, they, are, they are there. And uh, um, I've been told by some researchers, for instance, that working with us, has informed their research, that they're thinking about it in a different way. And so there's, there's really this exchange going on, which is very satisfying, and, uh, and it creates resonances a little bit everywhere for both the artists who are associated with us and, uh, and the scholars as well. Well, some people say it's less than 50% of the cells in our body are human. Some people say as little as 10% of the cells in our body are hu human. And uh, the new information is that only uh, that 99% of the genes in our body are, are human. And so it raises questions about the sequencing of the human genome. Uh, and uh, our, What did I say? Human. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 99% of the genes in our body are bacterial. So it raises the question of um, the impact of sequencing the whole human genome if it only means that 1% of what composes our body, uh, that it informs only that, that part, that uh, while they're sequencing the genome of a lot of bacteria that are 
exposed in our body to, and they're getting probably more important information from that than from the sequencing of the human genome. Well, thank you again, Isabel. So wonderful to thank have you, you here.